Hello, I'm Scott Manley and I'm going to talk to you today about how to maximize your escape velocity in Kerbal Space Program. So what I've got here is two identical rockets and I'm going to fly them in slightly different ways. The are exactly the same as the build that I used for my how to get into orbit video. That's four fuel tanks, a rocket booster, six uh, solid rocket boosters around the outside and uh, stabilizers on those. And then at the top, there's a the capsule with a parachute and a decoupler. We don't actually need the decoupler, but it, it just so happens that this exact setup uh, gets you incredibly close to the escape velocity. In fact, it just gets you slightly over if you go straight up, assuming you manage to perform your staging efficiently and don't lose too much velocity. Now, your escape velocity is a magic number. It's like your orbital velocity. It's actually, if you take the orbital velocity at a given altitude and multiply it by the square root of 2, you know, that's 1.14 or thereabouts, then you get the escape velocity. And that's the magic speed that if you're going at that, you are essentially unbound and you will keep going up forever. The gravity will slow you down. It'll keep slowing you down even out to infinity, but it will never reach zero. So you're considered to have escaped the gravity of the planet once you're traveling at this magic speed. Now, it's easy to build a rocket that goes straight up and continues to fight against gravity all the way and will exceed this. But that's not the most efficient way. It's actually possible that a rocket that is unable to go vertical all the way to escape velocity can still reach escape velocity if you fly it smartly. What you do is instead of going, well, you go up straight up initially like you would uh, getting into orbit, but once you start to pick up speed and get above 20, 25 kilometers, then you start to tilt over again as if you're going to orbit, and then you just burn uh, as fast as you can, just like you're going into orbit. The difference is that you don't stop once you reach orbital velocity, you keep burning in the same direction. Now, you'll notice the one on the left, I've spun it up. This is a, a trick that I haven't mentioned before, but if you use the Q or the E key to put spin on a rocket, a simple rocket without uh, lateral ob uh, attachments, then it'll keep it nice and steady without you having to fight with the controls. Um, it doesn't help if you're wanting to turn it over, which is why the one on the right is not spinning, because I'm having to be very careful to control my attitude to try and bring it into a lateral uh, an orbit. So as you can see now, we're up about 30 kilometers, and I'm basically aiming sideways to get as much speed as possible. Uh, the other one is, of course, now getting a m much better head start. It's up 45 kilometers already, whereas the one on the left is still below 40. So at the moment, the one on the left does appear to be winning the altitude battle. However, it is fighting against gravity, which means that its acceleration isn't quite as high as the one on the right. On the other hand, the one on the right has had to essentially give up its vertical velocity, which was about 300 meters per second. It's essentially throwing that away so that it can apply its acceleration uh, perpendicular to the force of gravity and ignore the penalty that that gives. So the question is, is this going to pay off when the all said and done? You can also see that now I've got the one, the one on the right pointing sideways. I've spun it up to keep it stable. And uh, yeah, our carbonauts are either freaking out, well, except for Jeb, of course, who is probably getting fed nitrous through his suit system by accident. Now, you amateur physicists out there might wonder what's going on here. I mean, surely energy and momentum are conserved quantities. And how can one physical system end up generating a, a particle with more energy and more momentum than another one? Well, the way to think about it is we've got to account for the mass of the fuel here. And the one on the right is tr aiming to burn all the fuel as low and close to the center of gravity as possible so that the potential energy isn't going into lifting this fuel up to higher and higher altitudes. On the right, you'll notice we're s on the left, you notice we're still burning fuel at 190 kilometers up. We've had to carry that fuel up there. On the left and the right, we're still around 62, 63 kilometers. That's much less 
uh, energy required to lift that up. So we're just seconds away from burnout here, and they're both burn out slightly different times, but in the end, the one on the left is going 2,900 meters per second at 240 kilometers. The one on the right managed 3,500 3, at 70 kilometers. Now the question is, does the difference in uh, velocity get made up for the fact that one has to travel further? Well, 34 minutes later, you can in fact see that the one on the right is passing the one on the left. So the hyperbolic trajectory that was more complicated is actually uh, getting us ahead. And the one on the, the right is actually going about 500 meters per second faster than the other one by this point. So there are 3,415 kilometers. After 34 minutes and 41 seconds, we now have a, a new leader in the race between these two otherwise identical spaceships. All that changed was the trajectory that I flew them in. And I hand judged it. 60 minutes later, we've now got 700 kilometer lead on the, the one on the right. And in fact, it's going about half a kilometer per second faster. So the lead is getting bigger and is get, never going to get smaller. And of course, Jeb is still smiling all the way to infinity. So thanks very much for your time. I'm Scott Manley. See you around.